If you want to save a ton of time when you're working in Photoshop and automate some of your processes, I'm going to show you how you can use actions to get a lot more done more quickly. So I have this image open that I've got from pexels.com and I'm going to create an action. I'm basically going to sort of adjust the image, make the background black and white and save a few versions of it. But I want to automate that process and then be able to do it to a whole bunch of other images. Now, the way it works is for one, I've got my actions panel over here. And to avoid any confusion, I'm actually just going to shut down some of these others and leave this here. If you don't see the actions panel, go to window and actions to turn it on. So I've got some folders here that I'm used for sorting. I've got a bunch of actions in here, which I've created over the years and they're not sorted. So I've created a folder for this. If you do want to sort your actions, you can add more folders by adding this in here. So we can say new folder for actions and I have a new folder there. So the way it works is if I have an action I'm going to use or I want to record my action first, all I need to do is come down here and click plus for a new action. And I can call this one Grayscale Background and Save. I want to save it under Tutorial or I can save it to my new folder I created. But for now, we'll stick with Tutorial. And I can add a function key. So this is something that you could look into if you're doing a lot of things over and over again. You can say F8 or Shift F8 or Shift Control F8 to actually activate that function. I'm going to leave this off, but I just want to show you that that is possible and you can designate a color to it. So let's just put gray on there since we're actually doing a gray background. Now I can hit record. And now essentially I can just start going through my process. I want to make sure I know the process before I start so it's clean and there's going to be less errors when activating that action. So think about what you actually have and what you're going to do and how it will impact other images if you were to open them and do the process identically. But before we do that, for one, it is recording. I can stop it at any time and hit record again and all of the actions I take will come down the page here. So what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to just go through a process. I'm going to open up my layers and start editing my document. So I can go layer, duplicate layer, layer one, copy, right click, convert to smart object. And in order to create my grayscale background, this is not the main tutorial, but essentially I'm going to go to select subject, select inverse, then image adjustments, come down to hue saturation, bring the saturation down to zero, hit OK. I've got my image, but I might want to add image adjustment curves and I can just go auto. Maybe I want the darks to be a little darker in these images and the lights to be a little lighter. doesn't really matter. I've made some adjustments and then I'm going to go to file, save as. I'm going to save this photo as woman in park. But I'm going to save it as a PSD, so a Photoshop editable file and click save. However, I also want to save a copy for the web. So I'm going to go to file, export, save for web legacy. I'm going to choose a JPEG, make this image no more than 1024 pixels wide. Click save, create a new folder called web. Go in here and it says worn in park.jpg. I click save and the process is done. So now that I've done that, if I come back to my actions, you can see the list here, duplicate the current layer, convert to a smart object, select subject. It's got all the steps there. And at any point I can click on a step and hit play, but you can tell by the red button here that it's actually still recording. So I'm going to hit stop to finalize that recording because my action has now been recorded. So I've got my action recorded and at any point I can apply it to another photo. So now I have a completely different photo open and I have my action over here. Like I said, I can click on any level of this and hit play, but I want the entire action to run. So I click on grayscale background and save, and I'm going to just hit this little play button here. It will think about the process and perform it. And you can see backgrounds black and white. And he has been so that the image has been adjusted a little bit. But if I switch to the folder I saved in before, and now you can see it's also saved the JPEG here. So I've been able to export that JPEG as well. But there is one issue. It has saved over the woman in park PSD file because of the nature of the process. I actually saved this and it has recorded the name of the file it wants me to save it as, which is not necessarily what I want. So if I come to my actions here, I can click on where it says save, where it has me saving that PSD file and I can bin that command and remove it if I don't need it. But what I can do is now add to that. If I click on curves here, hit record, I can now click File, Save a Copy. Leave the name as it is, hit Save. 
and OK. And you can see it's been added under curves. So I can stop and add steps in between or at the end of a process. I'm going to stop that again. And that shows you how you can create an action and edit it. But you can also now do batch processing as well in order to do a handful or a bunch of images all at once. This could be anywhere from 10, 100, whatever images you have there. So the way that works. So in order to batch process this action on a series of images, I've got a folder open here. Now I've only got five images. We can do a lot more, but uh, five I think is enough to demonstrate just how easy this is. So I come up here to File, Automate, and Batch. And from there, under Actions, I can choose which folder. So if I go to my default actions, I've got all these, but we've just created that tutorial folder. So we've got Grayscale Background Save is the action I want to use. And then I choose the folder I want to work with. So I have this All folder here that I showed you before with the five images in it. I click on that, I come down, and I hit Select Folder. So I have my action and my folder. Now what I can do is override a few commands. I can, I can use all the subfolders within that folder. I've got some options here, but the destination, I can actually change that to a folder. Click choose. Maybe I create a new folder here, all exports or something like that. And I hit and I click into that folder and select folder. I can also click override action. So if I have any save as actions in there, it will override those and automatically name those documents. I click OK, and it's going to batch process these images. Now, these are the original images that I put into the batch. And over here is the exported folder. Right, resize this a little bit. You can see that we've got the two images we did originally and all of these images with the same effect added. And these are all JPEGs. They've all been resized in a similar fashion to what we did originally. I come up. All exports, we have all of the PSD files here so we can open them up and save them and make edits to that file. So if I open this one up here, we have the full image there at full resolution so we can do further edits. Now I thought about this afterwards, but I wanted to add it in. You can also export your actions. If I click on this action here, one thing you will notice is that I can't actually save it. I need to click on the action set itself. So the folder, click on these bars here, come down to save actions. I can save these actions in a folder. And then in the same fashion, you can load actions by uploading those there. So you can actually send actions that you use to another computer or maybe even to a friend. Now, saving can be a bit rough if people's file structures aren't the same. So there are some limitations to that as well, but still pretty handy to know that you can actually export and import actions. So that is an awesome time saver and a great uh, little hack for Photoshop users. And I highly recommend if you don't understand how to use actions, have a play with it. There is a little bit of a learning curve. You will have to figure out some of the steps you do may not work out if they require you to click around and be a little bit more manual. So it's great for processing things that require very easy commands from say the menu or duplicating layers, uh, that kind of thing. If you're having to use a paintbrush, or actually paint on, it's not quite as successful with those. But overall, have a play and see what you think. And uh, I highly recommend incorporating that into your Photoshop workflow. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please consider giving a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Thanks for watching the video.